Hello, my name's Lee and I'm an artist and some of my artwork is to do with portraiture. I do it in many forms and art world in general has taken uh, portraiture and it started right back from cave paintings where we were making mocks and walls with our hands and leaving our representation of our personality or our person or our being on a wall. Uh, right through to modern day where we're using our mobile phones to take selfies. And there's been a massive journey all the way through our history regarding portraiture and it's gone through many many changes. So why would you want to do a portrait? Why are you doing a portrait? There are lots of good questions and it often feeds into the concept of what it is you want to achieve in your work. So. A lot of people would think portraiture has to be a true likeness of somebody's face. Sometimes they want to have a status. They want to try and represent something about the person uh, of their nobility. So think, for example, a picture like uh, Henry VIII, who would be stood there, very authoritarian, in control, virile, powerful. Or you might think to Whistler's mother the fragility of her, um, the connection or disconnection, sometimes that coldness. I, I don't know what the relationship was between Missler and his mother, but there seems to be that disconnection and the very isolation of her. Now that could be just how I read it. And that's what's interesting about portraiture. Because we're tuned from birth and as humans to recognise and um, have a connection with other humans, uh, when we see a portrait, we immediately know to ourselves what the portrait might be about. It'll be our representation of it. When a child's born, the first thing they see is a face. And as they grow up and they start to represent that face in their doodles and drawings, uh, they normally make the head really, really big and the body really, really small because the body is irrelevant to them. It's all about the face and the facial recognition. So if mummy has curly hair, the picture has big curls. If mummy has a big smile, she has a huge smile. It's not about proportions, it's just about representing what's important to them. Now, you might think, well, the concept of the art and uh, a toddler drawing, you know, it's not that important. But it is, because that's the same thread taken throughout art. We start to develop as artists, and we start to choose what we want to represent in, a, in the portraiture that we do. Now there are some really good basics about portraiture. There's lots of them out there. Um, I'm going to do a little video uh, later just about some very, very basic elements of the portrait. There are lots and lots of videos out there that you can go and check out as well. Um, just about how to lay a portrait out. Often we see portraiture uh, represented almost like a passport photograph. And indeed, your passport photograph is a portrait. It's a snapshot of you. It's very formalised. It can only be uh, straight on. You can't have your hair tied up or your glasses on. There are certain rules and regulations about how you have to have your portrait done so people can recognise you when they're checking it. So there's a restriction to it. So often portraits are done with certain restrictions to them. It could be that the person sitting who's commissioning you to do a portrait wants to show a certain aspect of their personality and you as the artist have to try and represent that. It could be for a series of work where the portraits have a certain theme or thematic uh, concept behind them. Now I'm doing a range of work called Mammalian, which is this one here, uh, for a body uh, of uh, people who have been my friends for the last 10 years. And I sat down and had a conversation with them and that portrait is based around that conversation. So it's not just the likeness of the person, but there's a narrative that goes around it as well. So often you see in portraits a storytelling device, uh, uh, added a little other elements within the portrait, not just the person themselves, but little things they've added to tell you about their personality. The other thing we need to look at is body language. How people sit uh, can often convey emotion. Uh, it can often convey the way that they think about things. So if you were looking at somebody and they were looking very sad, you wouldn't necessarily have them all up in the air and pointing their bodies around in such a, uh, a statuesque pose, you would think uh, somebody who might be a little bit sad might be a little bit more withdrawn. So you start to attach body language with 
facial features and how people smile. Now, it's a massive subject. I can't go into all of the different genres and all of the different ways people have represented uh, humanity throughout art history. It's a vast subject and it's something I'm still learning as a professional artist as well. Even down to proportions and how light hits the face and how I can manipulate mediums to represent certain things. It's an ongoing journey and it never stops but that's one of the most important things about portraiture. I think as a, an art form or an art genre it's something that won't go away because we're human and we're attached to portraiture. If you're thinking about doing a portrait yourself there's some things you might want to consider. Who is the person you're doing? Find out a little about, about them. Not just their name and, and where they live, but about them as a person. What are they like? Are they a happy person? Are they a sad person? Now, it's not to say that people are either happy or sad, but you might capture them in a certain mood for a certain reason. So, for example, we're all in COVID at the moment and it can have an awful lot of pressures on people. So, they might not be their most exuberant, happy self in, our, in normal life, but COVID might have had an effect on them. So, how they might now, you know, be locked down and not be able to socialise with their friends it might catch them in certain moods. Um, they may be more contemplative, might be more thoughtful about certain things. I think certainly that I've noticed, uh, we're a little bit more compassionate with the, with the people and, and uh, surroundings that we know, uh, because now we miss them and they've been they kind of removed from seeing them whenever we want to. Uh, we think about them maybe a little bit more. So you might want to capture somebody that you haven't seen for a while, and you might need to work from a reference photograph. But you can play around with other, other things as well. So things like lighting, how dramatic you can use the lighting, uh, how subtle you can use lighting. So think about um, if you were to hold a torch underneath your chin and it would uplight your face, it would look very dramatic. Um, if you put a, a light through, say, a curtain and you could cast shadows onto the face, so think about a neck curtain, and those, the shadows of the neck curtain might fall on the face, might give you a slightly more sombre feel or look to the picture. You can light from one direction and have the height light striking so it could be quite a, a dramatic pose with a light coming down and it, you could sort of change the feel and mood of, of a portrait. You can put different colours in, you can add uh, textures to say about the person as well. So think about how uh, a baby's face might be quite smooth and soft and curved. You wouldn't necessarily do a scratchy drawing of a baby. So your textures and the way you use, say your drawing mediums for example, might give you a certain flavour or certain feeling to the portrait. You might want to use a, a cotton wool bowl and slightly pass over the pencil portrait that you've done on a on a, say, a baby's face and it might come, become a little bit softer which might have a more connection with a baby's face because it's soft. So you can think about the description, how do you describe somebody's face. So that's often what I would do when I'm doing a portrait. I'd have a conversation with them first, we'd have a talk, I would start to notice things about uh, the personality, how they might be saying certain things, how they might be sitting, I might try and convey what it is they're talking about. I might try and uh, use some of uh, their story into their portraiture. So I might decide to have them pose in a certain way to kind of further explain what they're about. Now you as an artist have a massive range of, of choice about how you sit somebody. So if you're drawing yourself, for example, a self-portrait, you can answer some of those questions. Now, there are many different aspects to everybody's personality, so you won't necessarily capture everything about you in one portrait. There's lots of different elements to you. What would you like to say? Would you want to describe how fun you are or how studious you are? Think about different aspects of your personality. You can write a list down 
and start to pick things that you might like to work on. Now it's not necessarily acting yourself or pretending to be a certain mood. You know, you're not going to sit there and go, mm, I'm sad. It would make for a very cheesy portrait. But if you are feeling sad or happy, what do you look like? How do you feel? How do you normally physically be when you're those type of moods? Now you can accentuate them, you can play around with the lighting to help to do that, or you can play around with your environment, where you are. If you're tired and sleepy, would you want to pose yourself in the garden or would you want to pose yourself laying on the sofa? And you probably pose yourself laying on the sofa because you're tired and sleepy. So you can think about how your environment can work well with your idea and put those two things together as well. So there's lots of different elements. Often we look at um, portraits and we're quite judgmental. And there's a reason for that. It's because we're used to seeing faces. And as I said before, since birth, we've been tuned to recognise faces. So when we look at portraiture in its art form, if there's something not quite right about the face, we see it really clearly. It's not like painting a tree where if you miss the third branch down and it's only got 15 leaves when the real tree has 16 leaves on it, you're going to notice straight away. It's not like that at all. With a face, if you've got something that's slightly out of proportion with its, itself, and I mean its own artwork, it can start to jar a little bit. There's something not quite right and there's something everybody will notice about it. Now it's not to say that it has to be about realism. You can have an expressionism. You can have abstracts nature to your artwork. There's lots of different artists that have done this throughout history. Even when you look at Van Gogh, he'll have a proportion to his face, but the textures and colours he uses are not necessarily realistic, but the impression of his face there's a certain realism to it. If you have a look at Picasso, and it's an abstracted shape, what you might miss is the real physicality of the person, but you might get an essence of what they're like psychologically, what they feel like, or what they felt like to Picasso. Now this is your filter, you are the artist, you are in control of what you put down, and what it is you want to try and say. It's important that you figure that out before you do a portrait. What is it you're doing? Why are you doing it? Who are you doing it for? Are you doing it for yourself? Are you doing it for a commission? Now if you've been set homework for example and you're a student and you've been told to do a self-portrait, what would you like to say about yourself? You can still take that question, you can still take that commission. If you've been asked to do certain things within the commission, say for example uh, it's a bank manager and he wants it for his office and he wants to tell you how important he is and how in control he is. Well then you've been curating your portrait in a certain style and with certain mannerisms that can try and convey that. So you can think about the different types of body language that might work. Are you going to sit him at home sitting on his favourite comfy armchair? You're probably not. You probably want him in his office where he is in control because he's the bank manager. So you can think about the different contexts of where people are sitting. What are they wearing, clothing wise? You know, are you going to put them in the suit? Well he's a bank manager, you want him to look like he's an authority, you're probably going to have him wearing his suit. You're probably not going to have him wearing his t-shirt and shorts that he had on holiday. It might be funny to do that and it might be good fun, but that wouldn't necessarily answer your brief. Okay, so you want some examples? Here they are. I've got a range of portraits that I've done over lockdown. Sky TV have a Facebook page and on that Facebook page at the end of February they're going to have the Portrait Artist of the Week. But basically they put the programme on on a Sunday at 10 o'clock for four hours. Now they're going to start season three in the, at the end of February so it's well worth checking out if you're interested in portraiture. It'll be on Sky TV Facebook page so it'll go live and you're able to sit back and watch an artist paint or draw or create their portrait within that time. Now what's also interesting is over on Instagram if you put the hashtag my P-A-O-T-W, my portrait artist of the week, you will see about 87,000 portraits done so far by people from all over the world at all different levels of those sitters that have been up so far. Go and research them. You know when you look into Instagram 
search faces and portraiture and see what pops up. Scroll through all of the images and see what really connects with you artistically. And maybe that's an indication to try and do that style in your artwork. That might help. But have a go, have fun. And as I say, if you like this, press like or subscribe to the channel. I go live every Saturday at two o'clock uh, with Artcat and basically it's just a general get together where I do a live demonstration and talk about art. You're more than welcome to join. Okay, see you soon. Bye.